Hey everybody, today we are going to be doing Unit 7 of our AP Calculus Review. This is going to be a short one, it's on differential equations. Um, so yeah, let's just get started. So first off, what is a differential equation? So pretty much, it is some equation with a derivative in it. And the you're not trying to find a numerical answer, I mean sometimes you might, but typically you're trying to find what the function is. So for, for our purposes, Typically, a differential equation is going to look something like dy over dx equals some function, right? You might have x's and y's, just some function of that, right? But for our purposes, let's first begin with a very easy one. So, so let me actually get rid of this for now. And let's say we have f prime of x equals 2x. Now, how do we find our original function? Well, this is the derivative of some function, right? So if we want to undo the derivative, we'll integrate. And typically, you just might be like, oh, okay, so then f of x, so you can say this implies that f of x is just equal to x squared. This is easy. You don't even need to do any work. It's just, okay, well, this guy's derivative is that, so you're done. But let's do this more concretely instead of just kind of looking at easily, because some of these will not be that easy. So, uh, let me just put that guy, okay. So yeah, um, how, how do we think about this? Well, let's assume that y equals f of x, so I'm going to put that, just so that we can write dy over dx, because you could write df over dx, but it's, it's more common to write dy. So dy over dx equals 2x. These two mean the exact same thing, because they're both the derivative. But the difference is kind of in the connotations that one has. So this guy really makes it, makes it explicit that the derivative is, the ch is a small change in y over a small change in x. Whereas this, this notation kind of loses that meaning. So that's an advantage of using this. This one, an advantage of using it might be just that it's quicker, it's quicker to write. Uh, you might even just write y prime, something like that. Um, but this guy kind of makes it look like the derivative is a fraction. Now it, kind of is, because you're, you find it by taking a fraction, but it's not totally a fraction, so you can't totally treat it as a fraction, but we're going to do that anyway. Now, you might be like, well, why? If it's not totally legit, then why are we doing it? Well, the thing is, it's not 100% legitimate, but it is 100% acceptable. So, I don't know, uh, you can look more into that, um, but this is a very interesting way. What we can do is multiply both sides by dx, right? So we're kind of getting rid of this fraction. So if I, if I multiply both sides by dx over here, so I'm going to do dx, and then I'm going to do dx, right? So then this and this cancel. And so from here, what we have left is a dy is equal to 2x dx. So now we have a dy and a dx over here. They're no longer in the fraction, so what do we do? Well, we can actually integrate both sides. If we integrate both sides, so we do this and we do that, the integral of dy is equal to y plus some constant, right? Now, over here we're going to get another constant, so I'm going to call this c1, right? And then on this side, the integral of 2x is just x squared, right? This is kind of what we did over here. So we have x squared plus c2. Now you might be like, oh my god, this is, there's so much, right? Um, like, why, why are we doing this whole thing if we already knew that it was x squared? Well, that's because we have to kind of learn this process for in a second. Um, and I'll, I'll just show you why, because it'll, it'll get a little harder in just a few minutes. So, okay, so we did, we have this, we have two constants here. Well, a constant minus another constant, we can move this guy to the other side. It's just going to give us yet another constant. So I can say y equals x squared plus c3, and I'll just call this c3 just c, this is all we need. So you can totally skip this middle step, okay, whatever. you can just kind of go straight to uh, the fact that you're going to get one constant on one side, so y equals x squared plus c, right, and that's it, right, or if they ask for f of x, um, you can just say f of x equals x squared plus c, either way works as long as this guy is true. So now we have our original function, and now let's say we want to find 
what C is, because you typically don't really, um, you don't know C whenever you're integrating. It could be any number. But let's say they gave us that f of 0 is equal to 2, right? So that means that 2 equals 0 squared plus C. So then from there, it's easy to see that 2 equals C. So then your, your function at the end is f of x equals x squared plus 2. So this is your final answer. But that's only if they gave you this, you know. Uh, if they gave you another f of 1 equals 10, you know, then, you, then you'd have a different constant here. Um, but that's pretty much the premise. So now what if we have a 2xy? This changes things, right? So let me, let me erase this. Okay, so now what we have is this. And again, I'm just going to write that this is dy over dx is equal to 2xy. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to move everything that deals with y to this side with the, with the dy, and I want to move everything with x on this side. Now everything with x is already here, so we don't have to do anything. Um, but pretty much this process is called separation of variables because we're separating the variables, all the y's on this side, all the x's on the other. So let's do the whole thing. Uh, we're going to multiply both sides by dx and divide both sides by y. So this is what we have, and we're going to again integrate both sides. And the integral of 1 over y is just ln of absolute value of y. And then we're going to get a constant there, but I'm going to hold off on the constant. I'm going to move it, uh, I'm going to take the constant on this side, right? Um, because again, we're trying to just isolate y, so, you know. Uh, so we're, this is again going to be x squared plus c1, okay? So now, what I want to do is I just want to find what y is, so I'm going to take e on both sides. And these are going to cancel, so we're going to get that the absolute value of y is equal to e to the x squared plus c1. Now, one interesting thing is that we can use a an exponent property to basically just for, say like you know e to the x squared plus c1 is equal to e to the x squared times e to the c1. Okay, so basically I'm just going to do that. Okay, so I hope you can see that based on one of the uh, what, like a major exponent property, um, and this e to the c1 e is just a number, right? So it's 2.7 to some constant. That's going to be yet another constant. So I'm going to call this C2. And it's pretty common to write, write it in this order. So we'll have, and I'm just going to call this C2 just C. So we'll have y equals CE to the x squared. Okay, this is cool. Um, okay, but now we need, you know, it's either y equals the positive version of this or the negative because it's the absolute value. So let's say the question had an initial condition of, let's say, y of 0 equals 3, right? So y equals 3, so it's going to be absolute value 3 equals c times e to the 0 squared, right? So e to the 0 squared, this is e to the 0, which is 1. So then we know that c is equal to 3. So what we have is y equals uh, 3e to the x squared. And that's our final answer. But you might be like, wait, how do we know it's not negative then? Well, you can really easily check because if it was negative 3e e to the x squared, right, based on this, you know, since we're, we have the absolute value, it could be the positive or the negative version. If we had the negative version, y equals negative 3e e to the x squared, then it would be, um, then the initial condition wouldn't work because here we'd have negative 3 equals 3. That, that doesn't work. So I'll just, you know, check that way. So yeah. Um, okay, now I want to do something very similar to this. We have, we have a, a, a good expression here, but I want to do something pretty similar. So uh, let me just erase this. Okay, so let's say we have dy over dx. I'm just going to write it dy over dx equals... Uh, actually, let's use dy over dt. Uh, this is going to be equal to uh, ky. All right. 
where k is just some constant, okay? So now let's solve this again. So we're going to have 1 over y dy equals k dt. I'm going to integrate both sides. And here we get the ln of absolute value of y. I'm just going through this quickly because you guys should know what to do. Okay, the integral of k with respect to t, where k has no relation to t, is just going to be kt, then plus some constant c1, and then we have the absolute value of y is going to be equal to, again, the same thing we did last time, it's going to be c2 times e to the kt. And again, I'll just call it c2 equal to c, right? So we have c e to the kt, um, and you should, you should probably recognize this from your algebra class, and I'm just going to get rid of these. You should get uh, like pretty easily recognize this. Maybe it had different letters. Maybe it had like a e like p equals a e to the r t or something of that flavor. This is a very important equation, and it models a lot of different things: compound interest, uh, population growth, any sort of exponential growth, anything like that can be modeled in some form like this. This is a very important formula um, that's used pretty much everywhere in, in anything, physics, uh, finance, uh, any sort of science, you know, in general. Um, and it comes from this differential equation. So this guy being derived from this means that this is also super important, right? So, so this is where that comes from. I hope, I hope that that made, made some sense, like that some of you guys were like, oh, really? Whoa, that's cool. Um, and this is where that comes from. So this is a very important differential equation, and this basically highlights why differential equations are so important. They model population growth, um, any sort of growth, like compound interest, like I said. Um, any, any, pretty much anything that changes can be modeled by a differential equation. Um, I'll show you guys some other examples of how you can use differential equations in the next section. Okay, so I realized I put unit one for this part, I meant section one. So here's section two, we're gonna talk about slope fields. So you might see this like weird like thing I have here, um, and that's what a slope field will look like in a second. That's kind of a grid uh, that I'm gonna fill in. So pretty much I have here the differential equation, negative x over y, um, and I basically showed all the work, uh, and pretty much you end up with x squared plus y squared equals c2. So it's a circle with a radius of c2. All right, so this is interesting. And that's basically kind of what you get at the end, just a circle. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to figure out its slope field. So basically we're going to take a graph and then we're going to see the, the slopes at any possible point. So let's start at the middle with zero over zero. Well, that's undefined, right? Because you can't, you know, divide by zero. Um, so, so we can't have a slope at zero. Well, actually, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, no, there, there is no slope at zero. Okay, so no slope there. Um, at any place where x is equal to zero, so your x value is zero, so that's gonna be on this line, your slope, your, your derivative, your slope is zero, right? So uh, let me actually use a red marker here. So you're gonna have stuff like this. And again, we're not going to have anything in the middle because zero over zero is undefined. Now you you will also have like other slopes going that way, but it's good to just have this. You'll see why in a second. Uh, and then any place where your y is zero, your slope is going to be something divided by zero, which is undefined. But whenever you have a slope like that, that means it's a vertical slope. So any place where your y is zero, you have a vertical slope. So those are those are really good. Um, now, what about the rest of the points? We still have 4, 8, 12, 16 points left. So let's, let's just figure it out. So this is at 1, 1, right? So if we plug in 1 and 1 here, we're going to get negative 1. And then over here, we're going to have, this, is, this point is negative 1, comma, neg no, this is 1, comma, negative 1. So plug that in here, we're going to get a positive 1. Here we're going to get a negative one, and then here we're going to get a positive one if you just plug those in, right? So we're getting this interesting kind of spiral pattern. So let's just keep going. So if we plug in this point, this is 2, comma 1, right? 
So we're going to get negative 2 over 1. That's the slope of negative 2. That's steeper than this guy. Um, and then here we're going to get, you know, if you plug in these points, you're going to get slopes that look like this. Um, and eventually, you know, you start to see what this looks like. And then uh, I'm just going to actually leave out these points because then it, it looks kind of weird. Um, but you can see that it's it's looking like a spiral, like a circle. And you can basically, if you dropped, um, let's see, let me get another color. Uh, so let's let's say this is some water here, and if you if you if you're thinking of this as like a field of just water, basically, let's say we dropped a droplet of water there, it's gonna rotate in this sort of pattern, and it's gonna keep going like that in a spiral. And that's exactly what our slope field tells us. So another application of differential equations is that they can model fluid flow, wind patterns, uh, anything that really flows around. And whenever you um, take, because there's a whole course on differential equations in college, if you take that class, you're going you're gonna to be very familiar with these. If you take Calculus 3, you're also going to be super familiar with these. That this, like, these are a really big portion of that. At a higher level, um, and it's just, it's just like it's it's really cool. Um, now I didn't get too much into the details, but again, this should not be like teaching you. This should be a review, uh, and I just want to show you the methods on on how to solve them. There are a lot of other differential equations um, that you should solve, so don't go into the AP exam thinking, oh yeah, this is all I'm going to see. Make sure that you're really good with this. I just wanted to show you this kind of stuff. Um, just at, at kind of a basic level, but like really so that you understand the intuition. So yeah, uh, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.